Hey, welcome back to the Car Doctor channel. I'm Tim. We're here at my repair shop, Donor Automotive, in Anchorage, Alaska. And I've got a quick video tip for you today regarding uh, Chrysler Dodge Jeep EVAP system issues. Um, I actually have a couple, like, third generation Ram pickups in here that are going to be a good example of the, the two types of EVAP system uh, that are equipped on most of these vehicles and we're probably dealing with kind of like 2002 through 2012 vehicles uh, where you might have come here after your check engine light illuminated uh, or maybe your uh, gas cap light uh, might have been illuminated as well with a message on the dash uh, about checking your gas cap. Uh, so anyway you may have a stored EVAP system code, maybe a general EVAP system failure, code PO440, uh, maybe a PO452, PO456, PO457, all going to be related to the EVAP system on these vehicles. So let's take a, a, a closer look here. And first we're going to look at this 03 RAM that I got here and uh, the specific issues that it has. Okay, so uh, this tip's going to apply to like 03 through uh, 07 vehicles. We've got this 03 Ram here, uh, but it, it's going to apply to like if you have a Dodge Aspen, uh, Magnum, uh, maybe a, a, a Durango, a Dakota, or a Jeep Commander or Grand Cherokee equipped with a V8 engine. And uh, you have a stored code PO440. Uh, that's indicating that, they, it's, that, that the, the PCM has recognized an issue with your EVAP system performance. So there's a few things that are commonly uh, related to this. First off being uh, vacuum hoses, EVAP system hoses. You want to check all the hoses in your system. You know, this is a great time if you've got access to a smoke machine to disconnect uh, purge and vent side hoses, fuel tank hoses, fill pipe hose. Uh, of course, most people don't have access to one of those tools. Uh, so a close visual inspection of those hoses, uh, especially on these Dodge Ram trucks, there's a purge hose that comes up the back side of the motor and uh, it's relatively hard to see where that hose uh, wraps around the back of the cylinder head and is prone to wearing through that plastic hose. So uh, take a close look at your hoses. Um, then uh, the EVAP purge valve, which is under the hood on this one, uh, you want to make sure that's cycling properly. You can engage that with the scan tool that has the ability to command the purge valve off and on. And just make sure it's cycling properly. Um, if that is all good, then it's most likely, and the most common cause associated with these, is a faulty uh, NVLD valve. The NVLD is the natural vacuum leak detection valve uh, or leak detection pump is what uh, verifies the integrity of the EVAP system and makes sure it's functioning properly by measuring pressure differences in the fuel system actually after the vehicle shut off to verify that your gas cap's tight, that the system's sealed, it's not leaking down beyond a certain amount. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to raise it up and show you some quick checks on the NVLD system and get you back on the road here. Also neglected to mention the gas cap, of course. Uh, the fuel cap uh, has got that little rubber O-ring around it. Uh, if you pull your fuel cap off and check that O-ring, if it's very cracked and uh, you know just kind of breaking apart, uh, you definitely want to replace your gas cap. And if you do, Use an OE cap. Get your VIN number, go to the dealer, and get the OE cap. These aftermarket caps, you're going to end up with trouble. It's, it's going to continue to have uh, EVAP system leakage. Just do it right off the get-go and get yourself an OE cap. Uh, in this case, the cap's good. It seals up properly, and uh, um, that's not the concern. So again, let's go take a look at the NVLD on this truck. Okay, so here's the NVLD valve. It's mounting to this bracket uh, just ahead of the charcoal canister in this case and uh, similarly located on cars and SUVs. 
but uh, the only way to test this basically is to disconnect the two hoses. This one's leading up to the vent side uh, up to the front of the vehicle and the other leading to the charcoal canister. And uh, if you adapt a handheld held vacuum tester to the charcoal canister side and then get a cap plug and plug this off on the vent side over here. And then you back probe this violet and white wire of the three pin connector um, and then turn the key on and measure your voltage. So for every one inch of vacuum change, uh, the voltage should change uh, on your uh, signal wire, uh, this violet and white wire. Uh, release vacuum and retest it several times as these valves can get sticky. Um, but anyway, uh, it, as in this case, the valve is totally fried and uh, not functioning properly at all. So we're just going to replace this NVLD, which by the way is the most common failure associated with a PO440 on this vehicle. And changing this valve is just as simple as removing the hoses, uh, disconnecting the electrical connector, which it's that Chrysler connector, which is always a pleasure. I don't know whatever happened to regular hose clamps, but I sure miss them. Okay, I got my replacement NVLD. Uh, they do make aftermarket valves. Uh, in this case, there's a Dorman part available, but you don't want to do that. Uh, you can save a few bucks going that route, but I don't know. Not sure if I would do that. Uh, here's the new valve. And so make sure that your hoses are free of any dirt and contamination. You don't want to get stuff inside your charcoal canister. Um, and then uh, it's just a matter of reinstalling the replacement valve on here.
Okay, once the repairs are completed, we're going to run this uh, forced EVAP monitor test and uh, confirm our repairs. Okay, uh, now that we're running that EVAP test out there on the uh, O3, uh, brought this O7 in, on, put it on the rack. Uh, this vehicle came in with a check engine light illuminated and also the service fuel cap uh, or loose fuel cap uh, message displayed and uh, had stored codes PO456, PO457, and the general EVAP code PO440. Well, again, uh, this vehicle has some of the similar issues. Uh, first thing you want to do is check your EVAP system hoses uh, back to the canister, the control valve. Go ahead, just like we did before, energize the solenoid under the hood. Same system there. Uh, double check your fuel cap. Make sure that the O-ring is good. Make sure that the uh, the fuel cap actually these you know click and whatnot, and get it get it clicked down and make sure it doesn't just pop right back off. Make sure there's you know it's it's being held down securely and sealing. Of course, if you have a smoke machine, uh, smoke this baby. You're going to identify the uh, hidden leaks in the um, hoses and whatnot, the plastic hoses that rub through the rubber vacuum lines that tend to rot and crack uh, you know I'm in Alaska and we're not really we don't have a problem with rust uh, like a lot of you folks do and these fill pipes are prone to rusting so want to pay close attention to that um, the uh, finally the uh, NVLD valve that we addressed on that O3 well uh, it's been updated and now it's called a let's see I want to get this right uh, EVAP system integrity monitor or the ESIM switch um, that basically takes the place of that uh, natural vacuum leak detection pump we had on those other models. This one actually uh, pops onto the canister assembly, does the same thing, but it's an updated design and a bigger piece of crap. So uh, uh, that's another thing we need to look closely at. And basically by the process of illumination on this vehicle, we've determined that the uh, electrical controls, the solenoid valve, the vacuum hoses, the system integrity is intact. ESIM is at fault again. So this one's actually a pretty quick fix. Um, we're gonna show you where that's at on the canister, get that squared away. Which, by the way, uh, there is a uh, TSB uh, associated with the EVAP system and a canister fault on uh, these vehicles. And you want to refer to the Chrysler TSB 25-003-07. Okay, here's the canister. And like I was saying, this uh, uh, whatever ESIM uh, is located right on the end of the canister here and basically it has a vent side hose it has an, a two-prong electrical connector and then it it pops in here and I'll show you what that's about uh, you want to make sure that your canister isn't coming apart uh, if you pop this out and you find charcoal up in here then uh, that technical service bulletin is going to apply and you're going to need to change out the uh, entire canister. And uh, but this tip's just basically going to show you the process of replacing this ESIM and getting you back on the road. We'll force the EVAP system monitor after this, just like with the other one, and verify that the system integrity is good and we're uh, all fixed up. So anyway, basically we just got to remove the electrical connector, the uh, vent side hose which boy now it has a bad ESIM huh and by the way that this parts pretty cheap I mean it's a $30 part as opposed to the uh, $130 uh, NVLD valve on the last one there so 
uh, you know, even if you're throwing parts at it to uh, diagnose it, uh, this one's pretty cheap, so uh, it's worth doing. So this tab right here, and you just rotate it just a little bit and pop it out. And remember the orientation has to be like so. Um, you wouldn't want it 180 out. It will go in that way, but uh, it won't work properly. So just make sure that you don't have any uh, charcoal in there, which you don't. And we'll go ahead and uh, change it out. Okay, real quickly again, uh, using the OE part from Mopar and uh, you also want the o-ring you'll have to order that separately from the dealer so get yourself the uh, valve assembly with the o-ring and again it's going to be about 30 bucks so uh, it's not super expensive and here's where that old o-ring sits uh, we've seen guys knock this o-ring off and replace the valve without a new o-ring and uh, it will not seal up, so that code will return if you don't get your O-ring on there. Uh, I suppose you could uh, reuse the O-ring, but definitely not suggested. Go ahead and install it and lock, the, uh, lock it in position. You're good to go. We'll go ahead and lower this thing down, run the EVAP monitor after we clear the codes, of course, and get this thing back to the customer. Well, hey, I won't get too hard on Dodge Chrysler for the design of their EVAP system because, you know, really all manufacturers have these ongoing issues with EVAP systems. Uh, they're just prone to, uh, you know, just kind of external dirt contamination, um, leakage and whatnot. Uh, you know, I just think it's going to be a problem ongoing for uh, till the end of time or until we get a, a, a drastic change in the way these systems are uh, designed and monitored. Uh, but, uh, you know, it is a great emission control component, especially for areas where you're dealing with photochemical smog, where uh, hydrocarbons and oxides of nitrogen combine and form photochemical smog in areas that are prone to that. Um, we don't have that issue up here, but, you know, having a closed fuel system is a good idea anyway. So hope this video was helpful. I appreciate you watching the Car Doctor channel. Please subscribe now and uh, we'll set you up with some more videos here shortly. Have a good one. Take care.